My name is Leslie Phipps. I'm a 30-year-old male working for an investment company. Work has been absolutely hell lately. Stocks have been on a roller coaster and my clients have been demanding, nervous, and edgy. I've come to hate coming to work and need a break. I have eight days of vacation coming and I need a change of pace and place. It's March, and I decided to go to Paris. My vacation starts the first week in May. A week ago, I asked my secretary to see what she could find for me. I simply don't have time to do it myself. I hope I'm doing the right thing. My secretary is not my favorite person right now. She's about 40, recently divorced, and I don't think she likes men right now. I just hope I can depend on her. I'm a bachelor and other than work my only interests are gardening, growing orchids and collecting art. I've always had an interest in art history. So, Paris may be just what I need. This morning Margot, my secretary, handed me a brochure for the tour she'd signed me up for. It was five and a half busy days in Paris, including a one-day bus excursion to Monet's home in Giverny. The package included hotel, museum passes, metro pass, guides, and the one-day excursion. It sounded wonderful. She said it was a bargain because of a group rate. There were 11 others on the tour. The price was right and with a relatively small group perhaps I could make some good acquaintances and there wouldn't be the hassle of a larger group. Margot said that the group was leaving New York on a Friday afternoon flight but because of a business conflict I couldn't avoid, I had to take a later flight. I would be arriving late and would have to connect up with the group at our hotel. The hotel shuttle would pick me up at 12.30 a.m. on Saturday. Everything is arranged. My hotel is about six blocks from the Paris Opera. I could hardly wait for May to arrive. May finally did arrive. My friend Steve had picked up my luggage Friday morning and would take me to the airport directly from my meeting. By the time my day had ended I was more than ready for the trip. I had the luggage I would check, my carry-on and my passport. Everything seemed ready. Steve pulled up to take me to the airport right on time. I checked my luggage and went through security without a hitch and my plane was right on schedule. It looked like a great start for what I hoped would be a fantastic week. New York to Paris is a long flight, especially since I have to fly from New York to Atlanta and then to Paris. Sleeping on a plane is not my forte. Once I was settled I looked over the itinerary for the trip once more. Giverny was the first thing scheduled, leaving from the hotel at 7 o'clock Sunday morning. It was only about an hour trip to Giverny but we were evidently taking a little side trip to a quaint village on the way for breakfast and sightseeing. The brochure said that we would be transported in two minibuses. I thought that sounded good, a chance to get to know the others on the tour. There was one line that made me wonder. It said something about the tour being something that every woman would appreciate. Oh well, it must just mean that there are some amenities especially for women. I didn't think that would be a problem. I've always gotten along well with women. The rest of the tour involved museums and time for self-directed excursions and exploration, it really sounded good. Finally, I was unwinding and felt like catching a few winks. I woke when beverages and snacks were being passed out. After a couple of hours in the air I decided to head for the restroom and stretch my legs. The routine repeated itself with slight variations for the remainder of the trip. At last, we were cleared for landing at Charles de Gaulle International Airport. We deplaned and headed for the baggage carousel. It seemed that it took forever for the luggage to start coming down the chute. Ours was a large plane and it took forever for everyone to find and pick up their bags. When all was said and done I was standing there alone with two lonely bags circling the carousel and mine wasn't one of them. I went to one of the airport attendants and asked about my luggage. He directed me to an office and I was told that evidently my luggage had been lost and that it would be sent through customs and sent to my hotel as soon as it arrived. The one upside was going through customs was easy, the rest of the passengers had already gone through and I only had my carry-on for customs to go through. After clearing customs, I headed for a phone to call the hotel for a shuttle. They explained that because I was late their shuttle couldn't meet me. They told me to take the Roycebus to the Opera District and it was only about six blocks to the hotel. 
I finally found the stand to purchase my ticket and found where the bus would stop. I had a 45-minute trip and so I looked at my Paris map and found where I had to go. The bus stopped almost directly behind the Paris Opera. Once I got my bearings, I was off. It was great being in Paris, all of the neat old buildings and little shops. I began to feel better. I noticed a painter up on a scaffold painting a sign above a shop ahead. I loved the old hand-painted signs. As I got up to that shop the sign painter overbalanced and the can of red and can of green paint fell off of the planking. When it hit the sidewalk, it splattered and luckily I was the prime recipient of the splatters. In fact, I don't think anyone else got a spot on them. The sign painter hurried down and came up to me and started wiping at the paint at the same time apologizing and saying how sorry he was, in French of course. My French is of the survival variety, but didn't prepare me for this. He didn't speak English and so I couldn't understand what he was saying. People passed by but no one stopped to offer assistance. My clothes were a mess. Without my luggage the clothes I had on were the only clothes I had. The only thing I could do was head for the hotel and hope I could get some assistance there. When I got to the hotel the desk clerk seemed surprised that I was Leslie Phipps. Why? I couldn't understand. I gave him my passport and he seemed satisfied. He expressed regret that the shuttle hadn't been able to pick me up but it was on another scheduled run. He seemed concerned about my clothes and I explained what had happened. He said that he would have a hotel employee pick up my clothes and take them to a cleaner and see what could be done. I explained that I didn't have any other clothes and he told me there was a bathrobe in the room and that he would try and get my clothes to me as soon as possible. I was given my room number and key, directed to the elevator and told that my roommate was already checked in. I was exhausted and was really looking forward to lying down and resting after the day's travel and the ordeal with the luggage and paint. I took the key and unlocked the door. Get out, get out, what do you think you are doing coming into my room? An irate woman was screaming at me. As I entered she pulled the bathrobe around her to cover the fact that she was only wearing a bra and panties. Sorry. But this is my room, room 203. Yes, this is 203 but it certainly isn't your room. Are you part of the Paris Art Tour? Yes. But this tour is supposed to be only women. You aren't Leslie, are you? Yes, Leslie Phipps. But Leslie is a woman's name. Tell that to my father. He is also Leslie. Leslie can be either a male or female name. My secretary made arrangements for this tour so I have no idea how this mix-up happened. I've wanted to go on a tour like this one and this is the first vacation I've had in two years. My secretary and I haven't been getting along too well recently, perhaps she did this on purpose. Well, what are we going to do? You certainly can't stay in this room. And what are the other members of the tour going to say? I don't know, but the desk clerk commented that the hotel was completely booked. There are two single beds. I assure you, I won't bother you. And I really don't have time to argue. I need to get out of these clothes so I can get them cleaned, my luggage was lost somewhere and I don't have anything else to wear. So, do you mind if I find a bathrobe and get out of these clothes so I can have them cleaned? A hotel employee is coming to pick them up in a few minutes. This is a mess. Well you find a bathrobe and get out of those clothes in the bathroom and then we can talk. The hotel employee came about five minutes later. My roommate, her name was Sarah, and I talked. She seemed to relax. I can't say that I blamed her for her reaction given what she was wearing when I came in. She started to see the humor in our situation, a real comedy of errors. She thought it was really going to be interesting when the others in the group found out whom her roomie was. Sarah was 33, attractive, rather liberal and with a good sense of humor. I certainly could have done worse for a roommate. We found that we were both interested in the French Impressionists and Picasso. Her liberality extended to her being willing to share a room with a male stranger. While I didn't have any suitcase, she had two huge suitcases. I told her she had enough luggage for two people. She laughed and said that was what some others in the group had said. There was a knock on the door. 
I answered and found that room service was bringing a carafe of wine and a plate of crackers and cheese as a way of saying the hotel was sorry for not being able to pick me up at the airport. I asked if it was possible to get another glass. One appeared and Sarah and I talked and enjoyed the appetizers. About an hour later there was another knock on the door and my clothes were brought back, in if anything, worse shape than they were in before. I called the desk to ask if they had any suggestions. I told them I couldn't very well go out shopping with the clothes I had. They said they were sorry but they didn't have anyone on duty able to go out shopping for me. I would have to wait until tomorrow and clothing stores didn't open early on a Sunday. The problem was that our minibus picked us up in front of the hotel at 7 o'clock in the morning. The trip to Giverny and Monet's gardens was something I absolutely couldn't miss. I told Sarah my predicament. She said that she had made friends with another tour member and perhaps they could come up with an idea. Sarah said that before I came the group of twelve had drawn straws and broken up into two groups. Sarah and I and her friend Sandy were in the same group. Sandy was, according to Sarah, funny, outgoing, and imaginative and perhaps they could come up with a solution. Sarah left and went to Sandy's room. I finished off the wine and cheese and tried to relax. About an hour later I heard the door open. Sarah and I assumed Sandy came into the room. Leslie, we have an idea. By the way, this is Sandy. Glad to meet you Sandy, I'm Leslie. Yes, so I've heard. You are a problem. Sandy and I discussed you and all of your problems. I don't know if you are adventurous and willing to try anything. But, if you want to go to Giverny tomorrow morning, the idea we came up with may be your only solution. Well, give me the bad news. What's your idea? You remember what you said about my luggage? That it's enough for two people, and no. Oh, you and Sarah are about the same size. I like a challenge and I think it would be fun. Are you willing to give it a try or do you want to stay in the hotel all day tomorrow while we go to Giverny? This isn't going to work. I couldn't pass as a woman. Are you willing to give it a try? If you or we have work to do. What about the others in the tour group? Oh, we called everyone in our group. Andrea thought the idea was a riot and she's dying to meet you. Margaret, well she said she is game for anything and that she has a thing or two to teach you. Ruth is the only one that had reservations about the whole thing, including letting a man be part of the group. But, after some talking she's willing to go along with things. We decided not to tell the other group about our project. Let's see how long it takes them to figure it out. Leslie, are you willing to try? Are you an adventurous guy? It doesn't look like I have much choice given the choices I have. Okay. Please promise, promise, oh, I don't know. Just try not to laugh at me. This is going to be hard. We won't promise we won't laugh, but both of us understand your dilemma and, I think, about your feelings about doing this. It should be an adventure and learning experience for all three of us. You can say that again. It should be an adventure and learning experience for all three of us. Oh, quit it. What do I have to do? All three of us started laughing. Then Sarah told me to sit down in a chair while she and Sandy picked out the clothes they thought I could wear. I overheard them talking and I'm afraid my face was turning red with embarrassment. What about underwear? Well he only has what he's wearing the rest is lost. I think we should do it from the skin out. You don't mind a strange man wearing your intimate things? It isn't my favorite idea, he'll just have to learn to wash things out by hand. And besides I think we need to make everything as feminine as we can. Perhaps men's underwear under women's clothes wouldn't work. Panty lines are panty lines you know. And I know I'm flat-chested but at least a bra gives me a little of that feminine form. And Leslie is going to need as much feminine form as we can find. I think the only way we're going to know is to have sort of an ongoing fashion show. This may take a while. Are you game? The question is, will he be? I overheard them talking. I was really wondering what I'd agreed to. Me turning into a woman? Sure, I'm not large, rather slim actually, I wear my hair a little longer than most men, and my face isn't the chiseled Adonis type. I can't believe Sarah is willing to do this for me. 
she and I are about the same size. This is not how I pictured myself in France. Lastly, Sandy and I decided that it would be best if you dressed in women's clothes from the inside out. So, would you go into the bathroom and put these on? Sarah handed me a pink panties and Sandy handed me a matching bra. If my face was red before it was five shades darker now. Sarah shooed me into the bathroom. Why don't you shower first? We want you trying on these nice clean things on a nice clean body. Now put those on and then come out so we can see how they fit. I went into the bathroom with my new pink underwear. I took off my boxers and t-shirt and took a shower. After I dried off I picked up the panties. I couldn't believe I was doing this, I stepped into them and pulled the panties up. They felt strange. Next was the bra. Me wearing a bra. I put my arms through the straps and then tried to hook it in the back. I had to take it off and look at the hook and eyes and see how many there were and their position. I put my arms through the straps and this time had more luck. I looked at myself in the mirror, me wearing a pink bra. Then I looked at my panty-clad self. Why was I getting an erection? I couldn't have Sarah and Sandy seeing that. I had to sweat the head of my penis and it wilted, thank goodness. Then I put the bathrobe on and tied it and went into the room. Well, well, what? Let's see how you look. You're going to have to take the robe off so we can see how things fit. But but nothing. If you want our help you'll have to take the robe off. Trey chic. He does look nice in bra and panties doesn't he Sandy? Now for the panty hose. You do know how to put on panty hose? Yes, I know how to put on panty hose. I've watched my girlfriend. Oh, a man of experience. I wonder what your girlfriend would say if she could see you now. Perhaps we need some pictures. Don't you dare. I took the pantyhose gathered one leg and put it on then the other and stood up and pulled them up. Sarah and Sandy were all smiles. They were having a great time. Sandy, what should we have Leslie try on next? Why don't we let Leslie pick the clothes she wants to wear tomorrow? Leslie come over and see what we have for you. We have a couple of possibilities. There is this dress and then there is a skirt and blouse. She. Look this is bad enough, I really don't need comments like that. Okay, I'm sorry Leslie. I'm afraid you'll have to expect some teasing from the group. There are a few members that I think will have trouble with having a male joining us. So you will have to deal with that as well. If we are going to have any chance of your passing we have a lot to do. Sandy and I will do all we can but we need your cooperation as well. I know. Thanks so much for being open-minded and willing to help. I'll try to do what I need to do. Good, now do you want to wear the dress or the skirt and blouse? Let's try the skirt and blouse first. Here's the blouse. The buttons are on the wrong side. No, they're on the right side. Here's the skirt. No, the zipper is on the left side, not the front and I think you'll need a half slip. You are going to have a lot of things to learn about being a woman. Sandy, what are we going to do about shoes? I brought lots of clothes but only three pair of shoes. Here Leslie, try on my shoes. Sandy took off her shoes and I tried hers on. Then, Sarah took off her shoes and I tried them on. Sandy's were just a little larger and fit me better. She said that she had a pair of flats that she thought would work with the skirt and would be easier for me to walk in. We seem to have the clothes worked out. What about his face and hair? And hairy arms and legs? I have some depilatory cream he can use on his legs and arms or he can use a razor. I think the depilatory cream would be better. It's up to Leslie. You know more about such things so let's go with the cream. I'll shave as close as I possibly can tomorrow morning. My hair is light so my beard isn't too noticeable. Good why don't you go into the bathroom and use the depilatory cream right now. Just follow the instructions on the tube and shower off. Tomorrow you can shave and then we'll do your makeup. That means that we will have to be up at 5 o'clock to get you all fixed up. I guess I'll leave you two and head back to my room. I'll see you bright and early. Leslie, the rest of the girls are anxious to meet you. Good night Sandy and thanks.
Lastly, why don't you go in and use the cream and shower? I'll shower after you are done. I'm sure you need your beauty rest. Do you think that will help? Thanks, Sarah. I'll try not to take too long. I went into the bathroom carrying the robe, took off the skirt and blouse and folded them up then took off the pantyhose, bra and panties. This day certainly isn't ending the way I had anticipated. I read the label and then applied the cream. I could tell it was working when I started sensing a stinging sensation. When it had been on a sufficient time I went into the shower. What hair I had soon disappeared down the drain. When I toweled off my legs and arms were smooth but a bit red and irritated. I hoped that would disappear overnight. I didn't have any pajamas so for modesty's sake I put the panties back on and then the robe and went into the main room. I put the bra and pantyhose in the top dresser drawer and the blouse and skirt in the closet. Sarah was waiting to use the shower. After I heard Sarah showering I turned off the light on the bedside table and crawled into bed. Bed felt so good. The panties and my hairless legs felt strange under the covers. Sarah came out she was wearing flannel pajamas. She turned out the lights and crawled into bed and turned out her light. Good night, Sarah. Good night, Leslie, sweet dreams. I just lay there thinking about the day and wondering what tomorrow would bring. Sunday, I had asked for a 5 a.m. wake-up call. Five o'clock came much too early. I answered the phone, thanked the desk clerk and got out of bed. Leslie, you are an early riser and you are wearing the panties. I'd forgotten and promptly crawled back under the covers. I didn't have any pajamas. The panty was the only thing I could think of. What about your boxers? I didn't even think of them. I guess we were so focused on the clothes for today, that's all I was thinking about. That's okay Leslie, I won't tell anyone. Now you go and shave. Sandy should be here before too long to help you with your makeup and hair. Makeup? I didn't even think of that. Sandy is a beautician and has a lot of experience we will be putting to use. I went into the bathroom, showered, shaved, and was about to put on cologne when I realized maybe that wouldn't be the appropriate fragrance for a woman. For a woman? Had my thinking taken a 180 degree change? Sarah knocked on the door and passed me the bra, pantyhose, and a half slip to put on. When I came out Sarah was ready to come in and take her shower and Sandy had set out makeup and what she needed to fix my hair. Good morning. Well are you ready for an exciting day? Good morning and I'm not sure, but let's get on with things. I assume you already have your bra, panties, half slip and pantyhose on. Yes, but they aren't mine. Are you sure this is going to work? No, but do you have another choice? You could wear the paint-smeared clothes you wore yesterday but I think you would attract more attention that way than dressed as a woman. Besides you will blend in with the rest of us and be just one of the girls. Okay, let's get started. Sandy started by putting on a light makeup base, then a little bit of eyeshadow, eyeliner, and mascara. She finished off with a very subtle blush and an almost natural shade of lipstick. Sandy explained that she wanted the makeup to be very subtle. She didn't want a painted lady. I appreciated her reasoning because neither did I. I wanted to blend in, for that matter, I almost wished I could disappear altogether. Next, she worked on my hair. My hair was long enough that she could style it so it had a rather feminine appearance with the use of a little gel and brushing. When I looked in the mirror I was amazed. The woman staring back at me wasn't an ugly caricature but a rather average woman, just what I wanted to see. Sarah came out of the bathroom and stared wide-mouthed at me. Sandy you've done wonders. Leslie is a very attractive young lady. I'll just grab my clothes and get ready in the bathroom. Sandy can you help Leslie get dressed out here? I'd be happy to. Leslie the blouse and skirt are hanging in the closet. Can you go and put them on? I went to the closet and took the blouse and put it on and then took the skirt, stepped into it, tucked in the blouse and zipped it up. When I turned around Sandy was looking at me and smiling. You aren't a bad looking young lady. I'll take that as a compliment. I put on Sandy's shoes and now I was completely dressed for the day. When Sarah came out of the bathroom she could hardly believe the change. Leslie, I thought of one other thing. 
I have an extra purse that will just go with what you have on and you will need something to carry your billfold and makeup. Makeup. We girls must freshen up once in a while you know. It's 6.25, I told the girls that we would meet them in the breakfast room at 6.30. Leslie, this is going to be your big coming out event of the day. All of the other girls are anxious to meet you. We didn't inform the other half of the tour group about you. We thought it would be fun to see how long or if they realize there is a male in women's clothing in the group. I hope you don't mind. No, I don't mind. I did some acting in college. Let's see how well I can play this part. Great. The three of us headed for the elevator. When the door opened there were already two women and a man. We entered, smiled, and nodded to the others. Nothing was said and no one looked at me. We got out of the elevator and headed for the breakfast room. I must say that wearing women's clothes had a distinct feel that I wasn't totally prepared for. The feeling of my pantyhose legs brushing against the half-slip and the cool feeling of air movement as I walked in the skirt were certainly new sensations. The feeling of the bra straps and the bra band around my chest also was new to me. There was the taste of my lipstick and the fragrance of my perfume as well, all of the female sensations coming at once were going to take some getting used to. The other three members of our half of the tour group had commandeered a table for us. I felt myself blushing as Sarah introduced me to the others. All of them smiled. I was wondering what they were thinking. Soon I was barraged with suggestions about how to hold my cup, what to do with my napkin, how women do this or that. Sarah whispered to me that when they had talked to the others she had said that it would be important that they all help me be as feminine as possible. But all of their suggestions were putting me on overload and I began to wonder if I was up to this. Sarah sat beside me and whispered that I needed to relax and reassured me that I was doing fine. I really needed that at that moment. Sandy suggested that we go around the table and everyone introduce themselves and say a few words about their interests. Most of the group sounded like very interesting people. Margaret was very shy but offset her shyness with a wry sense of humor and Ruth was self-effacing, attractive, but that attractiveness was overshadowed by a certain lack of fashion sense. Then there were my close friends Sandy and Sarah, both with a wonderful sense of humor and Sarah with a heart of gold. When it came to me I suddenly lost my voice. It dawned on me that if I talked the jig was up. Andrea suggested that I simply whisper and blame it on laryngitis. The others all nodded in agreement. Margaret suggested that it would be fine if I used my regular voice when it was just our group. Funny, but by the time tea had been served and we were all enjoying our breakfast I had the feeling I belonged. Feeling accepted was nice at this particular juncture. It wasn't too long after we had sat down that the other half of the tour group came in. They had a table on the other side of the room, which allowed us the freedom to talk amongst ourselves. Kelly, a member of the other group, did come over and introduce herself and inquire if our group was complete. Sarah said yes, with Leslie's arrival our group was complete. Sarah introduced us. I just nodded and smiled. Kelly was very attractive, very intelligent, very articulate and an art historian. At that moment I wish she were in our group, I wish I were wearing something more appropriate to my gender, perhaps another time. Even though we were one tour group the breaking up into two parts really changed the dynamics. Our breakfast break soon came to an end. We got up to leave for the minibuses. As we were leaving the table there was a tap on my shoulder. It was Ruth. A lady must keep an eye on her purse at all times, and she handed me my purse, which I had left on the table. Thank you Ruth, and I gave her a little squeeze. She blushed beautifully. Each group loaded onto their respective minibus and we were off for Giverny, which would normally be about an hour's drive from Paris but we were taking a little side trip to the village of Montchavet. Our driver told us that the village is quite typical of the region and that there is a wonderful little restaurant where we could get a real French breakfast. The village was quaint and picturesque. The restaurant did have a good breakfast, our second, it also happened to be run by the driver's cousin, aha. It was a beautiful drive, we got some good pictures, and it was a wonderful sunny morning in France. After eating and picture-taking we were again off to Giverny. Finally, we arrived in Giverny. 
After we got out of the minivans we gathered together and went into Monet's home, which also had a gift shop and restrooms. Three of our group immediately headed for the women's room. I looked at Sarah and she, from the expression on my face, realized my dilemma. Why don't we both go into the ladies' room when the others get out? You can't very well go into the men's room and I'll act as a distraction if anyone else comes in. The other members of the group were all smiles as Sarah and I passed them going into the women's room. Sarah, I noticed, wasn't smiling. Using the restroom wasn't that easy. I now knew why women take so long. I had to pull up my skirt and half slip as I sat down and had to pull down my pantyhose and panties. Oh, to be able to stand. Luckily no one else came in. I pulled and tucked everything back into place and exited the stall. Sarah looked at me and gave me thumbs up and suggested I rejoin the group while she used the facilities. Once we were all together we were given a tour of the house. The dining room was so cheery with the bright yellow and the sun pouring into the room. The Delft tiles in the kitchen were beautiful. Flowers from the gardens brightened all of the rooms. After the house tour we were free to wander the gardens. I broke from the group and wandered by myself. I had the distinct feeling the others felt they needed to be with me all the time to avoid my having some embarrassment. There weren't too many other tour groups and I felt I could be on my own and let the others do their own thing. I was amazed by the color. There were peonies, iris, poppies, azaleas, delphiniums, and rhododendrons all in bloom. My attention was drawn to the iris and I was just standing and enjoying them when Margaret approached me. Are you an iris fancier? I was watching you from over by the poppies. You seem so intent. I didn't think men were interested in flowers. Ever since I was small I've been interested in flowers, especially iris. I guess I'd have to blame it on my grandmother. She was an avid gardener and I always enjoyed helping her. What caught your eye about these? The branching is just what I look for, the substance of the blooms is amazing. The subtlety of the color is very nice and the proportions of the standards and fall seem just right. Now I'm trying to find a label. Margaret stooped down and started looking for the label with me. Here it is, Madame Bouvier. Perhaps you can find it in the States. Margaret stood up. She had a broad smile. I think I'd made a friend. The group wandered through the gardens for about an hour and a half more. I found the wisteria blooming on the Japanese bridge by the lily pond. Evidently Margaret had talked to others in the group because several came up to me and asked questions regarding one plant or another. Suddenly I had become an expert. I found myself looking at the gardens and trying to imagine Monet sitting, easel and canvas before him, painting this beautiful place. His paintings would have more meaning for me from now on. But it was time to leave. It had been an early start and a long day already and I think we were all ready to head back to the hotel. I sat next to Ruth on the way back. She was about 45 and had recently been divorced. She told me that she had resented me being part of the group. Ruth said that she was beginning to come around and thought maybe my being with the group was okay. She said that she never thought she would be talking this way to a man dressed as a woman and she had never met a man quite like me. She said that all the men she had ever met were into beer, football, obnoxious jokes and treated women as somehow inferior. Maybe I should have forced my husband to dress in women's clothes. I don't know if that would have worked, but it certainly gives a different perspective, sitting in someone else's panties so to speak. Ruth chuckled when I said that, reached down and squeezed my hand. Another friend perhaps. Andrea passed out sandwiches and juice that had been in a cooler on the minivan as we headed back to Paris. We were all hungry and it would be some time before dinner this evening. Finally, we arrived back at the hotel and headed for our rooms. We had decided to rest and get together in the lobby at 8.30 and walk to an interesting restaurant about five blocks from the hotel. Until then we could go to our rooms and relax and change. Sarah and I headed for our room. Leslie, I'm going to go into the bathroom and take off this dress and put on the robe and just relax on the bed and take a little nap. What about you? I guess I'll take off this blouse and skirt and do the same. I'll change out here. I was stretching out on my bed when Sarah came out of the bathroom. It felt good to take off my shoes. 
I can't imagine what heels would be like. It did seem strange looking down at my legs and seeing my pantyhose encased legs. I think you should wear the dress to dinner this evening. Sandy said that she had a pair of low heels for you. I guess I would be seeing what heels felt like. Sarah was asleep almost as soon as her head hit the pillow. I set my travel alarm for 7.45 and just lay there thinking of the happenings of the day. Sarah had a gentle snore almost like a cat purring. I guess I fell asleep too because somewhat later I was awakened by my alarm. We had 45 minutes to get ready. Leslie, why don't you put on the dress out here? I'm going in the bathroom and change into my clothes and then I'll help you touch up your makeup. I adjusted my pantyhose and put on the dress. When Sarah came out of the bathroom she was wearing slacks and a cream-colored blouse. She went to her dresser and got out a sweater. I think you will need one too. It gets a bit cool in the evening. Sarah reached into her dresser and got out a cardigan sweater for me as well. She put it on my bed and told me to sit down so she could help me with my makeup. I just need to freshen it up a little and maybe a bit more I make up for evening. There was a knock on the door and Sandy walked in. Leslie, I have some shoes for you. I think these will be a little more appropriate with that dress. I think that Sarah and Sandy had been talking this afternoon and had my dress for the evening all planned out. I almost think they were enjoying this. Sarah, do you think Leslie needs to have her hair styled a bit? Yes, why don't you do it right now? Here is a comb and brush. Sandy was amazing. My hair, which normally looks very masculine, had a light if short feminine look and Sarah had done a good job with the makeup. Without my really realizing it I had come to sort of enjoy the attention and to be honest didn't mind wearing the women's clothes. I was experiencing a whole new set of sensations. I wonder what Margot would say if she knew what her reservations and the set of errors had caused to happen. Leslie, I'm amazed at you. You are not a bad-looking woman. You are even picking up some mannerisms that are making you even more convincing. Andrea wants you to sit by her at the restaurant this evening. She has the best French and will order for you. Luckily, we had reservations. When we got to the restaurant it was full. It was an amazing place with mirrored walls, coat racks, and the waiters wore black pants and vests, white shirts, and white aprons. The tables were covered with paper. The waiter brought the menus. I really didn't have to worry about anyone hearing my male voice. The restaurant was so loud with talking we almost had to scream to be heard by the person sitting next to us. Andrea helped me decide on my order and gave it to the waiter. I soon found out another reason for the paper table clothes. The waiter simply wrote the orders on the tablecloth and checked off the food as it was brought, very efficient. Talk about atmosphere. I had the feeling that Toulouse-Lautrec would come waltzing in with friends at any moment and ask for a table. The food was rich and wonderful, we all had too much wine given the amount of food we had eaten today. Conversation flowed, and we all had coffee and rich chocolate desserts. We finally left the restaurant at 10.30. By the time we got back to the hotel we were all ready for bed. The tour leader told us that we were on our own in the morning and were scheduled to see the Musée Picasso in the afternoon. I guess that Sarah was getting used to me because she simply took off her blouse and slacks all the while talking about tomorrow's activities. It was almost like I was just another woman, which was fine with me, less complicated, more relaxed. Leslie, Andrea, Sandy, and I were thinking of walking up to Sacre Coeur in the morning. Would you like to join us? It is a bit of a walk. That sounds like fun. Andrea knows of a small restaurant she thought we might like for lunch. Then we could return to the hotel, then take the metro to the Musée Picasso. Perhaps somewhere along the way I can find a men's store. Sarah didn't say anything. She went into the bathroom and changed into her pajamas. Afterwards I went into the bathroom and put on my boxer shorts. When I got out Sarah was already in bed and nearly asleep. I set the alarm and crawled in. Monday arrived all too early. Sarah was up and coming out of the bathroom when there was a knock on the door. It was Sandy. She had come to discuss what I was to wear today. Sarah, what do you think? I was thinking perhaps this floral skirt and the pale blue blouse. Sarah held up my clothes for the day. Oh, four pants and shirt. 
That's a good idea. They should go well together and I have the navy blue sweater. What about underthings? Well you supplied what he wore yesterday so I guess it's my turn. I'll go and see what I have. Sandy left and returned a few minutes later with a pair of light blue panties and matching bra, both with lots of lace. Sandy handed them to me. My face turned crimson. Leslie, now don't be embarrassed. We want you to be the best woman you can be. Oh, and here are a pair of nylons and a garter belt. Do you know how to put them on? I think so. Just put on the nylons and greater belt than the panties. Okay? Why don't you go into the bathroom and shower and get dressed? I'll stick around and help you with your makeup and hair when you get out. I went into the bathroom, showered, shaved, and changed into my skirt and blouse. The pull of the garter belt on the nylons was a new sensation. The skirt came to just above my knees. The blouse wasn't sheer but I could just make out the outline of my bra underneath. My bra, things were getting strange. I was beginning to think of these things as being mine. There was a knock on the door. I opened it and a hand came through handing me a slip. Sorry, we forgot this. I took off the skirt and blouse and put on the slip. Looking in the mirror the clothes certainly didn't fit with the face and hair. Oh well, Sandy would take care of that. I walked out into the room. Honey, you're slipping. Sarah came over, unbuttoned my blouse, and adjusted the straps on the slip. Now that's better. Sandy had me sit by the table and spread out her makeup. She applied the makeup the same as yesterday then she worked with my hair. When she was finished I got up and looked in the full-length mirror on the bathroom door. I was amazed. Sorry honey but I think we need to use these. I noticed that you didn't fill out your bra too well yesterday. I don't think anyone noticed, but... Sarah came over unbuttoned my blouse and placed a rolled up nylon in each bra cup. Now that looks better. Don't you think Sandy? Yes, much better. I felt the same way yesterday. Well are we ready to head down for breakfast? Sandy handed me the purse. As we walked out the door I took one more look in the mirror. Those last few comments had deflated my feminine view of myself a bit. Leslie, take shorter steps. We headed to the elevators and went down to the hotel dining room. There were a few other members from our group at a table along with a member from the other group. They invited us to join them. You'll do fine, were the words Sandy had for me as we sat down. Everyone introduced themselves. I whispered. Sarah explained that I had laryngitis. It turned out that the person from the other group was named Ashley and she was a plein air painter. Ashley was very attractive and in her early 40s. After tea, French bread and jam and a glass of orange juice we were ready to leave. Ashley excused herself and explained that some of her group were taking the metro and heading to Notre Dame Cathedral. Sandy told her our plans and she said she wished she could join us but felt she needed to stay with the group. I was relieved. It was quite a walk to the top of Montmartre and Sacre Coeur. Below Sacre Coeur was the carousel that was in the movie Amelie. For some reason I really loved that movie and now I'm actually here. It was wonderful once we got to the top. Looking out, all of Paris was at our feet. I felt the swish of the slip against my legs, the tug of the garters on my nylons, the tightness of the bra band and straps on my shoulder and chest and the weight of the rolled up nylons and the bra, and the fragrance of my own perfume. There was also the stirring of the light breeze coming up the skirt and caressing my nylon-clad legs. This is not how I thought I would experience Paris. Thank goodness I didn't wear the heels that I wore last night. The flats were at least comfortable. We continued up the hill past the 11th century cathedral, through the square filled with painters painting and selling their work and onto La Maison Rose where we would have lunch. After lunch we headed down the hill. I was amazed when I saw the Moulin de la Gillette, the location for one of Renoir's paintings. We did take a little detour through the Montmartre Cemetery. It was an amazing place, like a small city for the dead. A person could spend a whole day exploring and searching for tombstones of famous people. I saw a men's store and told Sandy I wanted to stop and go in and buy some clothes for myself. Sandy and Sarah said that they had some shopping to do and would meet me at our room. 
I watched Sarah and Sandy head down the street talking and laughing. I started into the men's store. Suddenly I realized it was going to be difficult buying clothes for myself. I was dressed as a woman. My French was lousy to be honest. Any male clerk would probably recognize that I was male and think I was a transvestite or something. As a matter of fact, I was beginning to wonder a little about myself. After all, I didn't really complain very much when this whole thing started. What was I going to do? One of the clerks was coming my way. I backed out of the doorway and headed down the street towards the hotel. Coward! When I got back to the room I stood in front of the full-length mirror and looked at myself. I spun around and watched my skirt flare out. I placed my hand up to my nylon breasts and ran my hand down my side. I closed my eyes and just concentrated on feeling. This isn't me. Or, is it me? What's going to happen? I've always gotten along well with women. I share many of the same interests. All the members of my book group are female except for myself. I'd always chalked that up to the fact that I didn't know of any male groups I could join, but I was never a big sports fan and never cared for boozing or making sick jokes about women, like so many guys. Maybe I'm somewhere between the two genders. Well, this is certainly giving me a chance to experience something new. I guess I couldn't ask for any better teachers or friends. What the heck? It would be nice if my suitcase suddenly appeared. I kicked off my flats, kept my skirt and blouse on and just lay on the bed and rested until the others got back. Didn't you like that little lingerie shop? Yes, and so cheap. Oh, Leslie is sleeping, shhh. You know she, he doesn't make a bad female. I was thinking the same thing. They woke me up but I pretended to be asleep just to see what they would say. I heard Sarah putting her shopping away. Where has the time gone? Sarah, we have to get to the New Z Picasso to meet the others. I'll meet you and Leslie downstairs. Leslie, we have to get going. We have to touch up your makeup. I got up and straightened my clothes. Sarah took my purse and touched up my makeup. Leslie, starting tomorrow you are going to have to learn to do your own makeup. I'm going to ask Sandy to teach you. Here's your purse. Let's get going. When we got to the hotel lobby Sandy was waiting for us. We headed for the metro entrance and were soon at the stop for the Musée Picasso. We had only a couple of blocks to walk. Most of the rest of the group was waiting to get in. Our guide was there talking to some of the group and answering questions about the museum and Picasso. Finally, the last two of the group joined us and we went into the museum. Our guide gave us a quick run-through of the collection making special note of some of the major landmarks in Picasso's long career. The guided tour was very well done but I think the whole group was anxious to really look at the artwork, taking their time to do it. Kelly the art historian from the other group came over to me while I was studying one of Picasso's early Cubist portraits. These early Cubist portraits have always fascinated me. I notice you studying them as well. I answered her in a whisper, both because I didn't want to disturb anyone else and because I didn't want my voice to betray me. We managed to carry on a fairly good conversation. She left me to look at some of Picasso's collages. She gave me a little wave as she left. I think she was looking at me a little funny. I wondered if it was my imagination or if the jig was up. Sandy came over to ask how things had gone. Okay, I guess. I think that Kelly is not only an art historian but has a detective's instincts. I wonder if she has an inkling that you aren't what you seem. I had the same thought. Sandy, Sarah and I got together and toured the galleries. It was an amazing place. We decided it was time to go. Sarah suggested we pick up some pastry at a little bakery we had passed on our way to the museum. The idea sounded good to Sandy and me. The pastries, I'd never seen such a selection. Sarah and Sandy decided to split a pastry with a wonderful apple filling. I couldn't resist a poppy seed roll. We noticed that the place de Vosges was only a couple of blocks away so that's what we headed for. It was a huge square surrounded with shops and restaurants. We found a bench and sat down to enjoy our purchases. Sandy and Sarah could only say hmm. I found the poppy seed filling the richest I'd ever tasted. 
You know, Leslie, if you eat pastries like those very often our clothes won't fit you. You need to keep your girlish figure. This is one of those once in a blue moon opportunities, and don't worry about my girlish figure. Are you too game to walk a bit? The Marais District has some amazing little shops and galleries. I'm game. What about you, Sarah? Let's go. We spent the next couple of hours poking our heads into this little shop and that little shop and marveling at the architecture and narrow streets. After all the Marais is one of the oldest parts of Paris. Finally, our feet were hurting and we decided to take the metro back to the hotel. We chose to have dinner at a little restaurant a couple blocks from the hotel. Once back at the hotel we headed for the elevator. Margaret was already in the car and we asked her if she wanted to join us for dinner. So, it would be the four of us. We decided to meet in the lobby at 8.30. I just want to sit down and take these shoes off. You and Sandy are amazing. Thanks for all of your help. I notice you are still in your skirt and blouse. I thought you would have purchased some men's clothes and be back in male dress. I was just about to go into the men's store when I realized what I was wearing. My French isn't too good and trying to buy clothes and explain why I was wearing a blouse and bra and skirt and nylons just was more of a challenge than I was up for. So, no male clothes, and here I am still in skirt and blouse and all the rest. Sarah and I just sat and talked. She was so easy to talk to and so non-judgmental. I think she was looking at my dilemma as sort of a challenge. She also said that it took guts and courage to do what I was doing. It wasn't long before it was time to head for the lobby. Sandy and Margaret were already waiting for us. Kelly was there too. Sandy told me that Kelly had guessed our little secret and thought it was really fun. Kelly said that none of the others in her group had figured it out and that she wasn't about to tell. I guess it's the five of us. Kelly wants to join us. She said that her group is a bit straight-laced for her and thinks the dynamics of our group much more interesting. The five of us set off for the restaurant laughing and talking. The restaurant turned out to have fantastic Italian pasta dishes. We all had spaghetti and lots of good wine. The wine was flowing, the conversation of flowing and we had a fantastic time. After two hours we decided it was time we left the restaurant. Margaret and Kelly left us and went to their respective rooms. Sandy said she wanted to join the two of us for a bit more conversation. As soon as we got into the room Sandy got on the telephone and called room service for a bottle of wine and appetizers. I really didn't think we needed much more after the meal we had had. The wine came and we poured ourselves glasses and toasted our friendship. Sandy and I have something for you. With that Sarah went to her dresser and pulled out three packages and gave them to me. Well, aren't you going to open them? Sarah and I spend at least an hour today finding these things and we think you will like them. I know we will. I opened the first and found two pair of pantyhose and a pair of nylons. We thought you would like those. I opened the second package and found four pair of panties. All of them had lace. Two pair were sheer. All of them were very feminine. We thought you needed your own panties. It should save on ours. Sandy took special care in picking out what is in the last package. When I opened the third package I found two brassieres and a pair of breast forms. We thought you needed your own. Sandy thought your breast forms needed nipples so that's what we bought. If men see nipples on a woman they don't pay as much attention to her face. So, we figured it would help with your disguise. At least the guys will be looking at your chest rather than your face. We all burst out laughing. Thanks, you too. I don't know when I've had more thoughtful friends. No one has ever given me gifts like these before, I can assure you. Well I think I need to get back to my room. You two sleep well. I went over and gave Sandy a big hug and a kiss on the cheek, then turned around and did the same to Sarah. From the expression on their faces I think they were both surprised and both of them blushed beautifully. I put my things away while Sarah went to change into her pajamas. Afterwards I went into the bathroom to change into my boxer shorts, which had become my pajamas. We turned out our lights. Good night Sarah. By the way, I can't wait to try out my new breast forms. Good night Leslie. 
Tuesday my alarm went off much too early, but it was a beautiful morning with the sun pouring through the windows. I think Sarah was thinking the same thing. She just lay in bed, eyes open, not quite wanting to get up. Are you feeling lazy too? Yes, Paris awaits but I'm afraid this bed still feels good. I guess we are going to have to get up. What do you want to wear today? Well, after your gifts I do have a bit more of a selection. Now that you have your own underthings that's your decision. I do have a nice conservative brown skirt, cream blouse, and a brown sweater I could let you use. Sandy's flats should work fine for you. I guess we are going to the Musée Rodin and Musée d'Orsay today, so I would think that would be appropriate. Why don't you shower first? You can get your underthings and I will find your clothes and get them ready for you. Finally, I threw my legs over the edge of the bed and got up. I went over to my dresser and selected the panties and bra I would wear and picked up the breast forms. Breast forms, bra, panty, and they're mine. I head to the bathroom shower and shave, and then put on my panty, pantyhose, and bra with breast forms. The bra is sheer enough that I notice my nipples. I put on my bathrobe and go out to see what Sarah has found for me. I'm going to shower while you dress. With that Sarah headed for the bathroom taking her clothes with her. I had the room to myself to dress. By the time Sarah came out I was dressed and waiting for Sandy's help with makeup. Sandy wants you to try doing your own makeup. You've been watching us. She wants to see what you can do. Sarah had laid out the makeup for me. The mirror was in front of me and I had watched what Sandy had done. I was hesitant at first but saw it as a challenge to see just how well I could do. The only thing I wasn't satisfied with was the eyeliner. There was a knock on the door and Sandy entered. Here are your shoes. You did very well with the makeup, a little touch up on the eyeliner and you're ready to go. There. We were ready to head down to breakfast. Our mornings had become a routine of our group meeting at a certain table and the other half of the group at another, always the same ones. Our groups didn't mix much. Which was all right as far as I'm concerned. We usually made plans for the day at breakfast. Today we would take the metro to the Musée Rodin and then afternoon take in the Musée d'Orsay. Breakfast also became a time for my group to critique my femininity, what I should do, what I should avoid, little suggestions here and there. Needless to say, this wasn't my favorite time of day, but their suggestions did help. I became increasingly comfortable in my new persona. We gathered in the lobby and headed for the metro station. Kelly decided to join us. I must say I enjoyed her addition to the group. It was only a few blocks from the metro stop to the Musée Rodin. We used our pass and wandered the museum. I had always admired Rodin's sculptures and also found his drawings and figure studies very interesting. The grounds and gardens were really enjoyable. I was most impressed with Rodin's gates. The figures were wonderful. Rodin must have been an interesting character to have known. I had read about his relationship with his models and how he had treated his mistress. After the museum I had a much greater appreciation for his art. Kelly seemed to enjoy talking to me about my thoughts regarding Rodin. Sometimes I'm not sure if she is interested in my thoughts or the idea of a man dressed in female clothes. I find her watching me quite often. Sometimes it is a bit disconcerting. After the Musée Rodin our group got a bit of exercise, as we headed to lunch at a small restaurant across the Seine. We passed the Musée d'Orsay on our way and would be returning after lunch. It felt good to sit down after all the walking we'd done. The one surprise I had was having the waiter pull out the chair for me and help me be seated. I noticed some grins on the faces of my fellow tour members. It seems that my disguise is working, at least I'm getting by with it. We had sandwiches and salads and excellent coffee. Everyone was discussing what to do in the coming two days. Some wanted to see the Louvre and others wanted to see Notre Dame Cathedral and Saint Chapelle. There was just too much to see and too little time. Basically, we decided that we would break into two groups and some individuals would break off from their group to see things they were especially interested in. Once we were done with lunch the group headed for the Musée d'Orsay. I was overwhelmed with what I saw. 
It was like the pages of all of my favorite art history books suddenly opened revealing paintings I'd never dreamed I'd actually see. There were paintings by Matisse, Renoir, Degas, Cezanne, more artists than I could even hope to name. Wandering through the galleries I came face to face with one of my most favorite paintings, it was Study, Torso, Sunlight Effect by Renoir. I had always loved the dappled light falling on the torso of the young woman. Her breasts were so beautifully delineated and yes, I found the nipples beautiful. I just stood there and drank in the beauty of the painting. What seems to attract you to this painting? I've been watching you and you have been standing here a good ten minutes. It was Kelly. She came up behind me and I didn't even know she was there until she spoke. I've always loved this painting. I can just imagine a sunny summer day with a gentle breeze. I can almost imagine what she must be feeling. You feel you can empathize with her? Yes, does that seem strange? Do you imagine you feel the breeze as it caresses her breasts and the warmth of the patches of sun on her skin? Yes. Do you think you can feel as a woman might feel? Yes, and perhaps I feel more intimately what she might feel after what has happened to me these last few days. Before I imagined what it felt like as a man imagining the feelings of a woman. Now I perhaps have an even greater empathy, not totally, but… But what? Just different. You don't seem like the usual man. Have you always empathized with women? Perhaps. I've always gotten along with women. I walk almost every morning. I used to walk by myself. A woman used to walk about the same time as I did every day. Then one day she asked if I'd mind if we walked together. She seemed satisfied that I would be a good walking companion, why I don't know. Anyway, we became good friends and soon a female friend of hers joined us and now I have two female walking companions. Things like that just happened to me. I'm the only male member of a book group, mainly because I wanted to join a book discussion group and this one was the only one I was aware of. It isn't that I'm uncomfortable with other men, I just seem to fall into situations where I'm the only male. But I'm not a big sports fan, and I don't like aggressive behavior. I like art, gardening, cooking, reading, things that often are attributed to being female interests. I'm happy as a man and love women. Does that answer your question? Yes, I guess it does. I must say you are like no man I've ever known. I only wish there were more like you. I don't mean dressed in women's clothes. I mean sensitive and empathetic. By the way, you aren't a bad-looking woman. Thanks, I guess. Kelly and I continued strolling through the gallery, commenting on paintings as we went. She was very knowledgeable about the paintings we were looking at. We had a good time, sharing insights and expressing our reactions to what we were seeing. Kelly wanted to see an area that I'd already seen so I asked her if she would excuse me, but I wanted to see another area. She smiled and went her way. I spent the remainder of the time with the paintings of Degas and Cezanne and revisited some of the paintings by Monet, recalling what we had seen at Giverny that first day. Funny, thinking about that first day. I remembered how ill at ease I felt and now I'm strolling through galleries all by myself and hardly thinking about what I am wearing. I must say this tour has certainly given me a unique experience. It's an experience I think I'll always treasure. Margot would certainly be surprised if she knew the chain of events she had set in motion when she signed me up for this tour. I may have to give her a raise when I get back. It was nearly five o'clock and the group was going to meet in the entryway and head back to the hotel. So I slowly wandered back through the galleries, wishing I had more time. Everyone was converging on the entrance. I joined Sarah and Sandy going down the last flight of stairs. We headed for the metro, taking a bridge over the Seine and seeing the Louvre just a little way away. I love Paris. Sarah, I don't think I'm going to go right back to the hotel. I saw a gallery that had some small etchings for sale. I think I'll detour there, you two go on ahead. I guess I was more confident, here I am going off by myself and not one person seems to notice. I did find the gallery and I did pick out a little etching. On my way to the gallery I wandered through a park and sat down for a few moments to watch some men playing bowls. Imagine just sitting and feeling completely at ease. Sarah and Sandy arrive in the lobby of the hotel. Pardon. 
Have you seen Mr. Phipps? I haven't seen him since he checked in. His luggage just arrived, I haven't even had a chance to leave him a note. I'm sure he's most anxious to get his luggage. I'm going up to my room. Could you have someone bring it up? Certainly. Good. Sandy let's go right up. Sarah and Sandy went to Sarah's room to wait for the luggage. What are we going to do now? He's doing so well and men's clothes will just ruin everything. The others would be so disappointed. Sandy, you just take his luggage to your room and put it in the closet. We'll give it to him an hour or so before we leave for the airport. He'll be relieved and we will still have our female traveling companion. Sandy took the luggage to her room and did as we had decided. Both of us took a nap, waiting for Leslie to come back from his gallery shopping. It's strange how I've become accustomed to wearing women's clothes. Sometime I'm hardly conscious of it. No one seems to even give me a second look when I'm walking on the street. Sarah and Sandy have done wonders. I did find the gallery and found a small etching. The gallery owner was very nice and helpful. I don't think he realized I wasn't female. After purchasing my prize souvenir, I headed to the metro. I had a ten-minute ride, which gave me time to ponder a few things. The feel of women's clothes was still amazing to me. I loved the feel of the slip sliding past my nylon-encased legs. I had never thought of pantyhose as being warm, after all they're so sheer, and I never realized how much control top pantyhose would actually hold you in. I'm still feeling a little sensory overload. But it feels good. Oops. I have to remember to keep my legs together when I'm seated like this, also men do notice nipples. I can tell where the eyes of the fellow sitting across from me are looking. It is my stop. I get up and smile at the fellow as I get off the metro. He smiles back, glad I made him happy. It was only a short walk to the hotel. Sarah was sleeping when I got to the room. I tiptoed in and took off my shoes and lay down on my bed. I had an hour before the group headed out to eat. Sarah tapped me on the shoulder. Time to get ready for dinner. You'll need to freshen up your makeup. How did your solo foray into the art world go? Great, I found the little gallery and purchased the print. My trip on the metro coming back to the hotel went off without a hitch. Oh, a fellow on the metro did like my nipples. I told you so. Sounds like you're getting comfortable being a woman. You do seem more relaxed. The less conscious you are of what you are wearing, the less people are likely to notice. We have reservations so we best get going. It was the whole group, including Kelly, who seems to have grafted herself onto our group. The restaurant had typical French fare with lots of rich sauces. We enjoyed some good wine and lots of conversation. I didn't have any problem joining in on any topic the group chose to cover. The only thing I was a bit ill at ease with came after drinking too much mineral water and wine. I couldn't very well go to the men's room. Sarah realized where I needed to go and sort of queried me with a look if I wanted her to come. I just shook my head no. I don't think anyone else even noticed. The women's room is always an adventure. At the restaurant a woman came in with the embarrassing problem of the elastic in her panties having broken. She was a bit overweight. I don't think she wanted to admit she needed a larger size. Anyway, there she was standing by the sink, her dress hiked up so she could get at the elastic in her panties, trying to tie the two ends together. I went into a stall and did what I needed to do, sitting of course. When I came out the woman was gone. Poor thing! I'm glad she didn't know. I rejoined the group. We had wonderfully rich deserts and coffee. It was about nine o'clock when we left. Once at the hotel the group went to their separate rooms, except for Sandy, she accompanied us to our room. We sat and talked for about fifteen minutes. Then Sarah decided we needed wine for some reason and ordered some brought to our room. No sooner had the wine arrived and room service left than there was a knock on the door. There were Margaret, Ruth, Andrea, and Kelly all carrying packages and two of them with additional wine and glasses. Evidently this was a party in the making. Kelly was the first to speak. Sandy mentioned how she and Sarah had helped you solve some of your clothes problems. Actually, 
I guess it was partially their problem as well. The rest of us got to thinking. Leslie, I hope you don't mind my injecting myself into your group, it is far more interesting than mine. No, I enjoy your being part of us. Well, we got to thinking perhaps you didn't have enough to wear. We got your sizes from Sandy and thought we'd help out as well. A couple of us even stopped at the Bon Marque to see if we could find you anything. The prices were out of sight. So we found this quaint lingerie shop, commented Andrea. You girls didn't buy me more clothes, did you? Did we ever? Got a few things for ourselves as well, but it was really fun picking out things for you to wear. Margaret and Kelly went to a women's shop and the rest of us had a great time in the lingerie shop. Leslie, we're all anxious to have you open your packages. So please sit down. Girls, first let's have a glass of wine, were Sandy's words. Then Margaret proposed a toast. To Leslie, the guy who's really one of us girls. Everyone laughed and smiled. At that moment I really felt like one of the girls, and not just because of what I was wearing. Sarah leaned down and gave me a kiss on the cheek. Girls, I really don't need any gifts or anything. You've all been so supportive, I couldn't have asked for more. Andrea came over and handed me a package. You think we've been supportive, just wait. I took the package, untied the pink bow, and opened the box. Inside were a garter belt and two pair of nylons, one black lace topped the other pale gray. Now I knew what Andrea had meant. I could feel my face turn red. The garter belt was powder blue with lots of lace and the nylons had a subtle texture and beautiful lacy reinforcement at the top. The clerk in the store must have thought we were a bit strange. We sort of descended on the store. Everyone wanted their purchases gift wrapped and we were all searching for lace and ruffles and such. We did have a grand time and all because of you Leslie. Kelly was next. She handed me a nicely wrapped box. Inside was a belted dress. It wasn't really pink, more of a dusty rose. The fabric was soft and seemed to drape beautifully when I held it up. I bought one just like it for myself, only in a medium gray. I tried mine on and it's really classic. You'll like yours, I'm sure. Thanks, Kelly. I'm sure I will. Margaret came next. She had evidently been shopping with Kelly. Their boxes were the same. When I untied the bow and opened the box I found a blouse. It was pale gray with ruffles down the front and a Peter Pan collar. The fabric was soft and shimmered in the light. I think I was becoming enamored with the fabrics and colors women can wear. In the box was also a pair of slacks with pleats, just slightly darker than the blouse. I held them up to admire them, got up and gave Margaret a hug. She blushed beautifully. I'm next. Leslie, if you are going to wear slacks you really need a girlish figure. I have the same problem as you so I also bought one for myself. Everyone laughed at Ruth's comment. Ruth evidently hadn't realized what she had said until she said it. Ruth blushed and handed me the box and slipped into the back of the group and watched me open her gift. I knew it was from the lingerie shop by the paper and bow. What I found inside surprised me. It was a powder blue padded girdle. There was padding at the hips and derriere and there was a delicate lace panel down the front. Ruth, I would never have guessed. Thank you so much. You'll have to notice when I wear the slacks. I winked at Ruth. She just blushed some more. Sandy was next. She handed me her contribution. Even though Sandy and I had given you a few things yesterday we didn't want to be left out of today's festivities so you will be getting a couple of things from us as well. I thought this time I'd be a bit more practical so I'm afraid this time you're not receiving anything too risque. Sandy handed me the package. I untied the pink bow and found what turned out to be a half slip and camisole. I had to ask what the camisole was. Both were very feminine. Thank you Sandy. You certainly didn't have to do this. Two days in a row. I can hardly wait to put them to use. My face turned red as soon as I realized what I'd said. The rest of the girls just laughed at my embarrassment and smiled. I suddenly realized that I was becoming enthusiastic about wearing women's clothes. Sarah was next. She handed me the box and whispered in my ear. Something sexy and more personal for my roomie. 
The rest of the group sort of raised their eyebrows and I heard a few little comments and saw a few more smiles. Sarah now blushed beautifully. When I opened the box, I found a matching pale powder blue bra and panty set. Both were very feminine, with a fair share of lace. I held them up for all to see, to ooze and awe in Sarah's embarrassment. Below, snuggled in the tissue paper was a sheer pink baby doll pajama set, also with lots of lace. I thought you needed something other than those old boxers you wear to bed. Everyone laughed and I held my new pajamas up for all to see. I got up and went and gave Sarah a big hug and kiss. I heard laughter and comments coming from the group and poor Sarah was the reddest I'd ever seen her. Getting dressed should be more interesting from now on. Sarah, you never told me you didn't like my boxers. I'm anxious to see how I look in my new baby doll, wink. Put it on now. Put it on now. Everyone started chanting. No, that's just between Sarah and I. Ah, the whole group said in unison. Kelly proposed a toast. Everyone, we have enough wine for one more glass apiece. To Leslie, our wonderful new girlfriend. May she continue to enjoy wearing her new clothes long after this trip is over. And everyone raised their glass. To Leslie. Even I raised my glass and then realized what I was raising my glass to and blushed a bit. Andrea commented, I don't know about the rest of you, but when I was buying for Leslie I found myself picking out things that were more feminine than anything I'd pick out for myself. Margaret agreed and most of the others nodded in agreement. Maybe we figured that giving Leslie feminine things would give him more of the sense of what it's like to be female and make it easier to come off as one of us. Leslie, I hope you don't mind, I think we all had reservations about a male being a part of the group but you've been such a good sport about things. Well, you just seem like one of us girls and we've come to love you. I never thought I'd be thanking friends for dresses, bras, panties, and garter belts. Getting to know you has been wonderful and an enriching experience. I've been thinking I may have to buy a suitcase to take these beautiful clothes home. It should be interesting trying to explain all the female clothes going through customs, but I certainly can't leave these things here. Tomorrow I'm going to have to figure out what to wear. Sarah and Sandy have pretty much made choices for me before. Now you are going to have to guess what underthings I'm wearing. How about it, Ruth? I'm game. And the rest of the girls can vote on who has the best-looking derriere. Everyone laughed at that. After the last of the gifts had been opened, the girls gathered around me and I was on the receiving end of hugs and kisses. Not that I didn't give anything in return. I thanked each in turn and they made their way out of the room talking and giggling, all except Sandy of course. I shut the door behind the last guest and turned around. Leslie, we could hardly keep from telling you what the group was doing. We all shopped on the way from the Musée d'Ors. If it wasn't so late I think we'd like a fashion show. Have a good night and enjoy your lovely things. Sandy left. It was just Sarah and I and a room full of boxes, paper, and ribbons and bows. We picked things up and folded or hung the clothes in the dresser or closet. I never thought anything like this would happen when you knocked and came into my room last Saturday. Neither did I. You are beginning to have quite a wardrobe. Tonight, why don't you shower first and change into your PJs? With that Sarah handed me my baby doll set. Your baby doll set will look so much better than those boxers. Now off with you. Sarah wasn't being bossy. She smiled so nicely. I took the baby doll from her and headed for the shower. After showering, shampooing and drying off it was time to put on my new PJs. I was happy the panty was full cut. She could have gotten me a bikini. I pulled them on and found they weren't completely opaque. The lace on the front did help a bit. The top was soft and sheer with a bit of lace down the front. Looking in the mirror I could see my panties but the set wasn't as revealing as I had feared. I got up my courage and walked into the room. Sarah had a grin from ear to ear when she saw me. Now isn't that much better than those old boxers? Maybe, was my only comment. I crawled under the covers. Sarah went to her closet took something out and headed for the shower. About half an hour later she came out wearing a baby doll, which was almost a mate to the one I was wearing. 
Her top was sheer at the bottom but more opaque at the top. I could see her panties but just barely and the outline of her breasts when the light was right. I like those pajamas are better than the flannel ones you've been wearing. Thanks, I like yours too. We turned out the lights and soon Sarah was asleep with the soft purring sound that she made. I lay there and brought my hands down under the baby doll top and felt of the soft smoothness of my panties. The baby doll really felt good. I was thinking about tomorrow and wondered what it would bring. Today was certainly one of surprises. Wednesday wake up sleepyhead. Sarah was shaking me. We don't have much time to get ready for breakfast. You certainly slept soundly, perhaps it's your new baby doll PJs. I sat up and then remembered last night's events. Sleeping in this baby doll set certainly did feel different. I looked over at the mirror on the dresser. I looked different in a sheer pink baby doll with all the lace. Sarah had gone into the bathroom to shower. I got up and tried to decide what to wear. My choices had certainly expanded in the past two days, bras, panties, pantyhose, nylons, breast forms, slacks, blouse, slip, camisole, dress, and garter belt. I had a regular wardrobe. When Sarah finished I took my shower, shaved, etc. I took my bra and panties and camisole in with me. Today was the Louvre. I guess I'll wear the slacks and blouse. Let's see, panties, girdle, camisole, bra and breast forms, and pantyhose? I guess that would work. I'll put things on then decide if I look okay. So far so good. The girdle did help to prevent a bulge in front. It was a little problematic putting my penis between my legs and pushing my balls up and out of the way, but I did look flat, womanly you might say. I put on the pantyhose, blouse, and then the slacks. The pantyhose tended to slide down because the girdle was a bit smooth. Sarah had gone into the bathroom to finish dressing when she came out the bathroom she was all dressed and ready to go. Sarah, I'm having trouble with the pantyhose they don't want to stay up. I have just the thing for you. She went over to her dresser and took something out of the drawer. Here are a pair of calf-length nylons, they should work for you. Your problem hadn't even crossed my mind. You do look good and the padded girdle does wonders for you figure. Those slacks look very feminine on you. Thanks. I took off the slacks, took off the pantyhose and put on the calf-length nylons. Once I put on the slacks that problem was solved. Women certainly have more things to think about when they're dressing than men. When I looked in the mirror I was satisfied with my looks. I worked on my makeup and hair next. Once I was done Sarah gave me a little touch up. Here, wear these flats and this brown cardigan should work fine with the gray blouse and slacks. They are rather warm toned gray. Never in a hundred years would I have thought I'd be dressing this way in Paris. Looking in the mirror I really saw an average but not unattractive female. I spritzed a bit of perfume behind my ears on our way out of the room. Sarah stepped aside and let me go first. Ladies first! We took the elevator downstairs and headed for the breakfast room. Ruth had evidently just come down herself. She looked at me and smiled, actually I think she blushed a bit. Your slacks look very good on you. So do yours, and my girdle certainly helps with my girlish figure. Same here! The three of us burst out laughing. We entered the breakfast room and the rest of the group was waiting for us. All heads turned when I came in. Nice slacks and blouse. Where did you get them? Nice as their Leslie. Ruth you did wonders. Ruth, the two of you do look very shapely. Everyone seemed to have a comment. Poor Ruth was really embarrassed. Sarah leaned over and whispered in my ear. Leslie, you do look really stunning. You've come such a way since that first morning. Following breakfast, we took the metro to the Louvre. Ruth sat next to Sarah and I. I think she was feeling good about her contribution to my feminine appearance. We found our way to the pyramid entrance to the Louvre. What was the name of the book that used the pyramid and the Louvre as a major location? I'll have to ask the rest. The line wasn't too bad and we soon gathered together at the entry to the exhibits. We tried to decide what we wanted to do. Some just wanted to go directly and see the Mona Lisa. 
A couple wanted to look at the sculptures. I wanted to see the room of Ruben's paintings. The general feeling is that there was too much to see in a day. We basically broke into three sets of two. Sarah and I went together. The group decided to meet at 11.30 and decide what we wanted to do for lunch. Sarah and I walked through about four rooms and then decided to sit and relax and concentrate on the huge paintings when we got to Ruben's. You know you amaze me. I was walking behind you going through the second room. I was watching you. You have the mannerisms down, the walk, the posture. If I didn't know you I'd have thought you just another woman walking through the gallery. How do you do it? I guess that having to be a woman these past few days I've been a student of women. I've watched you and the rest of the group and taken time to observe women around me. The few times when I've been alone it's been both frightening and exciting. I know I slip up once in a while but when I'm in the group people just see the group. I guess it's sort of like a school of fish, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean but you are really a surprise. If you don't mind my saying it, I feel completely at ease being with Leslie the woman. I don't mind, in fact, I feel it a compliment. We wandered on through the Renaissance paintings and then went to join the group. It was decided to go to the same restaurant we had gone to yesterday. Lunch was uneventful except for the fact that we had the same waiter pulling my chair out for me. Poor guy. I wonder if he remembered me from yesterday. I hope I'll be able to fit my new clothes when I get home. These French meals may put a few pounds on my frame, figure. After the meal and some good conversation, it was back to the Louvre. It would take a month to even start to absorb all there is and we have only one day. I wanted to see the works by Rembrandt, Fantin Latour, and Vermeer as well as the Mona Lisa. Sarah wants to see works by Fragonard and Botticelli. We both wanted to see the Impressionists. We checked the map and planned the rest of the day. We made it to everything we wanted to see. Oh, for more time. We met the rest of the group outside the Louvre and decided that we would all go our separate ways for dinner. Sarah and I both decided we wanted to get off our feet so we found a bench in the Tuileries and enjoyed the park-like gardens. My feet are killing me. Mine too, and I don't know how women can stand wearing a girdle. At least this one has some padding where I sit. But to be honest Sarah, I don't think girdles were designed for someone with a penis. I've been uncomfortable almost all afternoon. It does feel good to sit down though. Poor boy. Not having a penis, I can't imagine how it feels. But perhaps we should go back to the hotel. Would it help if we stopped in a women's room and you could take your girdle off? No, I think I'd feel more comfortable wearing it under the slacks, appearance-wise if not comfort-wise. Sarah and I sat for another ten minutes then headed for the nearest metro entrance. We were back at our hotel within half an hour. Finally we were in our room and I kicked off my shoes and took off my slacks and stood in the middle of the room with just nylons, girdle and blouse showing. I quickly peeled out of the girdle. I didn't even think about Sarah standing there watching. She just looked at me and laughed. As bad as all that. Yes, as bad as all that. I found myself a bit embarrassed, realizing what I'd done in front of Sarah. I guess we had really become roommates. Both of us had, at one time or another, walked around the room in just bra and panties. I guess I hadn't thought about how comfortable we had become around each other. Sandy called to say she was going out to dinner with Kelly, Ruth, and Margaret. We decided to take an hour nap then take a stroll on the Champs-Élysées to the Arch de Triomphe and find a café along the way. I borrowed a skirt from Sarah that went with my gray blouse. Next came my slip, garter belt, nylons, and flats and I was ready to go. Sarah decided I did need to freshen my makeup and needed a sweater. We took the metro to a stop a little way from the Arch de Triomphe and enjoyed the excitement of the traffic and the people. It was a beautiful evening, a bit cool but my sweater was just right. I think anyone seeing us would have just seen two female friends enjoying one another's company. I love the feeling of my nylon-clad legs against the fabric of the slip and the gentle tug of the garters. I must confess that after wearing my bra and breast forms it almost felt a normal part of me. That is until I cross my arms across my chest and find my breasts in the way. Sarah, are you aware of your breasts? 
That's a strange question, why? Well I find mine sort of get in the way once in a while. No, they are a part of me you know. I guess I really hadn't thought of them. Are you always conscious of your penis? No, I guess not, it's just a part of me. Well, yes, I guess there are times when I am very aware of my penis. Let's not go there yet. Let's hope there aren't any Parisians who speak English listening to our conversation. They might just wonder. Sarah, you're beautiful tonight. So are you. Thanks. We continued to walk. The night was absolutely beautiful, I think I said that before. We crossed to the Arch de Triomphe. It was huge. It really hit me with the lights and the excitement of being in Paris. I took Sarah's hand in mine, pulled her to me and held her close. Sarah didn't resist. When we realized what we had done we just smiled at one another and ended up holding hands at arm's length and just looking at each other. I don't think either of us cared what someone else might think. We took pictures of each other there. A couple asked if we would like to have them take a picture of us. I gave them my camera and they took our picture. I offered to do the same for them. After the Arch de Triomphe we walked until we found a restaurant that looked appealing and had dinner. Just two girls enjoying the Paris night, wine, good food, conversation, and each other. By the way, the waiter pulled out the chair for both Sarah and I. As we sat eating we both noticed the lights on the Eiffel Tower. It seemed to beckon us and so after we finished eating we decided to walk to the Eiffel Tower. We knew we wouldn't have time to come in the daylight, too many things to do and see. We found a bench and just took in the sight of the tower with the lights playing on the massive structure. It was cool so I put my arm around Sarah's shoulders and pulled her to me. We both enjoyed the shared warmth and also being close. We sat and talked for a while then went to find a metro entrance. It was getting late and we had to get back to the hotel. We got back to our room. Both of us were tired after a long day. Sarah went into the bathroom and changed into her baby doll pajamas and got ready for bed. Your turn. I picked up my baby doll pajamas and headed for the bathroom. I undressed and placed my clothes on the counter by the sink. My clothes! Silky sensual fabrics and they were mine. Why was it that men were usually kept from having fun with colors and fabrics? After experiencing what women wear, men's clothes seemed so rough, unexciting, and colorless. I put on my baby doll, picked up my clothes, and headed into the room. Sarah was already asleep. I put away my things and crawled into bed. I found it hard to sleep. I kept thinking about what had happened between Sarah and me. Things certainly weren't the same. Our reaction to each other had been so spontaneous. I wonder what the morning will bring and if Sarah will mention this evening's events. I turned out my bedside light. As I did I heard Sarah stir. Good night Sarah. Good night Leslie. I fell asleep but not before I heard Sarah tossing and turning a bit. Perhaps she was thinking about us. Thursday my last full day in Paris. That was my thought as I lay there. What's happened? What a strange chain of circumstances that have brought me to this point, lying in my Paris hotel room in a pink baby doll. Me with a female roommate and part of an all-girl art tour. And what about Sarah and I? What about last night? Everything is all turned around. Leslie, are you awake? Yes, Sarah. I'm just lying here trying to figure things out. I know what you mean. It's been the same for me for the past half hour. I guess we are going to have to face the day. Do you want to shower first? Yes, I'll shower first. Why don't you just relax? Browse through these brochures about Saint-Chapelle and Notre Dame, if you'd like. I went to the dresser and found the pantyhose, slip, panty, and bra I intended to wear. It struck me just then how casually I just did what I did. It had become almost natural. What really jarred my thoughts was picking up my nipple breast forms. I carried the clothes into the bathroom. I showered and washed and conditioned my hair and shaved my legs. After drying off I very carefully shaved my face. This had become my routine. I put on my panty and bra, slipped the breast forms in place and sat down and put on my pantyhose. 
Sarah and I had stopped worrying about our seeing each other dressed like this midway through the week. I used the brush and hairdryer and ended up with my hair looking passably feminine. Now it was Sarah's turn in the bathroom. Sarah, I'm done. Your turn. Thanks, Leslie. You look good this morning. Do you know what you are going to wear? Not exactly. Why don't you work on your makeup? We can consult after my shower regarding clothes. I pulled the chair up and looked at myself in the mirror. My hair looked good. I applied the base, then worked on my eyes, and finally used a bit of blush. Everything was natural and understated. I decided to apply my lipstick after I dressed. A fairly average but not unattractive woman stared back at me from the mirror. Sandy had been a good teacher. Sarah came out of the bathroom dressed almost the same as me. Leslie, your makeup is very well done. What are you going to wear? I thought I'd wear the gray blouse and, if you don't mind lending it to me, the gray skirt. I don't mind. And the gray sweater as well? Yes. Sarah got the clothes for me and we both dressed and got ready for breakfast. I put on lipstick and a bit of perfume. We were ready at the same time. There was a knock on the door. It was Sandy coming to join us. Good morning you two. How were things last night? Did you enjoy your dinner and walk? I think Sarah and I both blushed a bit. Hmm. Very interesting want to tell me about it? Not now. The elevator arrived and the three of us got on and went down to the lobby and breakfast room. We weren't the first or the last. We picked up our food and settled ourselves at the table. The waitress brought us coffee and tea. Within five minutes the whole group had arrived. No one was quite as animated as in the past. I think we were all thinking about this being our last day in Paris. We ate and slipped into our usual topics of conversation. Some were returning to the Louvre. Some were going to the Poppy Dew Center in the morning. Sandy, Sarah and I decided to go to Saint chapelle and Notre Dame in the morning and the Poppy Dew Center in the afternoon. It was decided that both groups would eat together our last evening in Paris. The tour company had made arrangements at a special restaurant. That would be interesting. After breakfast we returned to our rooms to freshen up and then met in the lobby. Before we go I'm going to go back up to our room and call the airlines about my luggage. We'll wait here for you. I left, looking back at Sandy and Sarah they seemed concerned and were in an animated conversation. Oh, I hope that doesn't get through. He'd hate us if he knew what we'd done. Cross your fingers. If airlines here are anything like in the States he'll just be put on hold. When I reached the room I phoned the airlines. My French is almost non-existent but I could pretty much figure out what I needed to do. I ended up being put on hold and told, in French, how important my business was to the airline but I was still put on hold. I waited ten minutes, which seemed like an hour. I figured I couldn't keep people waiting so I hung up and returned to the lobby. Any luck? No, I was just put on hold. I guess things are the same all over the world. I'll have to return tomorrow with my paint-spattered suit. Maybe your clothes will show up. Not likely, let's go, Paris awaits. We headed for the metro station. After a pleasant ride we got off across from the Ministry of Justice, right next to Saint chapelle Saint chapelle turned out to be like walking through a box of jewels. It was a sunny day and the colors of the stained glass projected on everything. What a beautiful place. Next was Notre Dame. Inside it was dark and cool. There were candles burning at the side aisles and a reverent silence about the place. Between Saint chapelle Notre Dame and souvenir shops we managed to use up our morning. Just three female tourists enjoying the sights. By this time, I actually forgot what I was wearing most of the time. Every once in a while there would be sensations or the smell of my perfume or the feel of my nylon-clad legs gliding past one another. I can't say the sensations bothered me, in fact I rather reveled in them. Being a woman wasn't all that bad. A penny for your thoughts. Oh, nothing. You seemed deep in thought. You don't really mind being dressed as a woman, do you? No, I guess not. It has been something of a challenge and certainly given this trip a whole new dimension. 
Sarah and I have come to appreciate you as a person. I guess I should say we don't think of you as being any less of a man, but certainly someone who has courage and empathy and a strong sense of self. Sandy is right. We have really appreciated your courage. You've had to be observant and very aware of yourself to pull off being a woman and fooling so many. I guess I've surprised myself. Dressing and acting the part as I have has given me a whole new perspective on things. My feelings about women have certainly changed. You two have been wonderful teachers. I don't know about you and Sandy but I'm for looking for a restaurant. Let's go over to the left bank and find some place to eat. So we crossed the Seine and wandered along the street stopping at several of the bookstalls. There were books, reproductions of scenes of Paris and small souvenirs. Finally, we found a quaint little restaurant and a table by the window with the Seine and Notre Dame just beyond. Salads all the way around and coffee, we didn't want to spoil our figures. After lunch it was off to the Poppy Dew Center. It was just a pleasant walk. We crossed over the Seine, enjoyed another view of Notre Dame, one more bridge, and a bit more walking and we were there. I'm not sure I like the Poppy Dew Center with its exterior plumbing and escalators. It certainly was practical, leaving more space for the art inside. The main attraction was a show of women's art, Elle's at Poppy Dew Center what else could it be, given the nature of the trip so far? I guess I was destined to learn about women from the inside out and in all their dimensions. The show was interesting and showed all facets of women's art. There was work by Susan Valadon, Frida Kahlo, Mariko Mori, just to name a few. Sandy and Sarah had gotten a little ahead of me and I was standing studying a work. What do you think of the show? It was Kelly. She had come with a couple members of her group. She saw me and excused herself from the rest to say hello. There are some very interesting works. Do you think there are differences in the way the two genders create art? I mean, do you think you could look at a work of art and say, that was created by a man or that was created by a woman? I don't think you can always tell. The most telling thing, I think, would be the subject matter. I do believe men and women approach subject matter differently. In terms of how they handle the media, I don't think you could tell. Do you create artwork? Yes, I watercolor, mostly landscapes. Could someone looking at your work say, this was created by a man? I don't think so. In a way I think landscapes are neutral in regards to gender. And, after your experience in Paris as a female, will your paintings reflect anything of your new feminine understanding? I don't know. Some of my perceptions have certainly changed. I've come to a new appreciation of color and texture in clothes. Whether my changing feeling about color will find expression in my landscapes, I can't say. Interesting. Kelly and I started moving on. As we turned around we noticed some smiles on the faces of the people around us. Then it dawned on me that I had been using my normal voice in talking to Kelly. I'm sure several people had put two and two together and come up with a man dressed as a woman. Sorry, Leslie. I'd better get back to my group. I think that's the first time I've been found out. I'd better move on and find Sarah and Sandy. See you at dinner. Kelly squeezed my hand and winked at me as she left. I hurriedly moved on to catch up with Sarah and Sandy and left the eavesdroppers behind. We noticed you and Kelly talking. Did you have a good conversation? Yes, but without realizing it, I started speaking in my normal voice and I think a couple of people realized I wasn't what I seemed. Let's get moving if you don't mind. A slip up, eh? That hasn't happened before. I guess we'd better get move on. Sandy, is there anything else you would like to see? I would like to look at their permanent collection. Leslie? That's okay. I think it's one level down. So we wandered through the gallery with the permanent collection. I tried to be as feminine as possible. Finally, we were ready to go. Sandy needs to use the restroom. Why don't we go now before we head back to the hotel? Sandy led the way, followed by Sarah, with me bringing up the rear. I certainly hoped I wouldn't run into anyone that had heard me before. Luckily, it was only the three of us. We each found a stall and did our business, came out, and freshened up. Leslie, 
Did you do it sitting down or standing up? Sandy, that was rather a personal question. Leslie, did you do it sitting down or standing up? That's for me to know and you to wonder about. What do you think? We came out of the restroom laughing and headed for the exit and escalator. Let's walk a ways. I noticed some nice little shops. Do you or Sandy mind? No, as long as it is we three girls. Being found out bothered you, didn't it? Let us do the talking. We came to a cluster of neat little shops. There was a bakery, we decided not to spoil our appetite, small galleries, and a dress shop. All of a sudden Sarah stopped. Look at the neat dresses. Leslie, I think you need something special for dinner tonight. Sandy, what do you think? Why don't we? Leslie, the dress is on us. I won't say a word, but I have a dress I haven't worn and here are 300 euros. I can't have you buying everything. I handed the bills to Sarah. Sandy and Sarah gave each other a broad smile and took me by the arm and entered the shop. There were some beautiful dresses. We looked at the racks and found my size. Sandy took a couple off the rack for me to look at. There was one with three-quarter length sleeves and a cowl collar that I liked, a turtleneck sweater dress with a wide belt, and then there was one I really fell for. It was a black dress with a V-neck with a ruffled neckline, ties at the waist, and a pleated skirt. A salesgirl came over and asked if we wanted to try on the dress. She spoke perfect English. We were directed to a fitting room at the back of the shop. You have chosen a beautiful dress, and very feminine. Sandy thanked the clerk and we went into the changing room. I took off the skirt and blouse and sweater and Sarah handed me the dress. I slipped it on and tied it at the waist. It felt wonderfully soft. Sandy suggested I go and check how it looked in the full-length mirror just outside the fitting room. I opened the door and looked in the mirror. I loved the looks of it and it felt so right. The salesgirl was a short distance away. Say on Jolie robe, a very nice dress. I smiled at her and stepped back into the booth. Sandy and Sarah were giggling. I changed back into my skirt, blouse, and sweater. I had the dress hanging over my arm. Sarah handed the bills back to me. I walked back into the shop and handed the dress to the clerk. Will that be all? I nodded. She placed the dress in a bag and rang up the sale. I handed her the bills and got my change. I had a whole 75 euros left. On our way out, Sandy noticed a pair of shoes she thought would be perfect with the dress. They were black and a T-strap pump. She checked and they were my size and my change would just cover the cost. I picked them up and went back to the clerk and handed them to her. She rang them up and gave me my change. She put them in the bag and I joined Sandy and Sarah with two bags in hand. You realize what you've done? No. What have I done? You have just purchased your own female clothes. And, I think you enjoyed it, didn't you? The dress is very feminine and the shoes will look just so sweet with your new very feminine dress. I found myself blushing. Sarah gave me a peck on the cheek and Sandy did the same on the other cheek and we went off down the street laughing. We decided to take the metro back to the hotel. Once we were on the metro I caught myself looking down at my shopping bags at my feet. I did just purchase my own female clothes. I must admit I felt a stirring in my panties at the thought. What is happening to me? We got to the hotel and our feet were sore from all of the walking. We agreed to meet in the lobby at 8.30 to head for dinner. Sarah and I headed for our room. As soon as we were in the room we kicked off our shoes. We both stripped down to just our bra and panties and lay on our beds exhausted. We just looked at each other and smiled. Our being together and our casualness in doing things together surprised even us I think. Both of us felt the need for a nap. I set my alarm so we would be ready in time. Leslie, you have come to a milestone today. You seem to have developed sort of a fashion sense regarding women's clothes. You know what you want and today you even purchased your own female clothes, almost as if you were a woman. Do you think you will be dressing en femme when you get back home? I don't really know. As we were coming back on the metro I found myself thinking about the same thing myself. I don't really know. Just so you know, 
It wouldn't bother me if you did. Things have really changed since you first burst through this hotel room door a week ago. I almost forgot Sandy and I found a suitcase in a little shop the other day for you to put your new clothes in. I hope you don't mind. You aren't going to leave them here, are you? No. How could I leave such beautiful souvenirs here? We both settled back and took our nap. All too soon the alarm went off. Sarah headed to the bathroom to take a shower and then change. I found the bra and panty I was going to wear. I decided on a garter belt and my black nylons. I had taken my dress out of the bag so it could hang out and took that out of the closet and draped it across the back of a chair. I tried on my new shoes and they fit beautifully. I put them under the chair and noticed how nicely they went with my dress. Sarah came out of the bathroom so I picked up my panties, bra, and garter belt and headed for the shower. When I got out Sarah was already dressed. She looked fabulous. Sarah, do you suppose I should have a slip? If the answer is yes, could I borrow your black half slip? Sarah went to her dresser, found the slip and handed it to me. I sat down on the bed and put on my nylons and attached them to my garters then stepped into my new shoes. I thought I'd better get used to the heels. Makeup was next. It had become such a normal part of my dressing that I hardly thought of it. The slip was next followed by my new black dress and finally I brushed out my hair. Leslie, you are beautiful. How about a little perfume? Thank you for the compliment and for the perfume. I love the scent. Could I use the gray sweater this evening? I think it would go with my dress and it may get chilly later this evening. No problem. We got to the lobby early. Most of the other half of the group were waiting in the lobby talking. It would be 15 minutes before the vans came to pick up the group. We knew where the restaurant was and decided that if we left now we could walk to the restaurant and enjoy the night air. Margaret was already down and waiting so we told her so that they wouldn't be waiting for us. Then we took off on foot. What a beautiful evening. I love my dress and these shoes are really comfortable, even with two-inch heels. Leslie sometimes if a woman feels beautiful she is beautiful. You are beautiful this evening. The three of us got to the restaurant about five minutes before the vans. The tour representative went in with us. She suggested that we mix things up this evening. We went into the restaurant and sat down. Sarah sat next to me on one side and Audrey from the other group sat on my other side. Kelly, from the other group but really one of us, sat directly across from me, with Sandy sitting beside her. The tour had arranged for a fabulous last evening in Paris meal. Everything was fantastic, and then there was Audrey. She wanted to dominate the conversation, but she made for a humorous evening. I think French men are so gallant, so cultured, so romantic. American men are such clods, they don't have any empathy for women, don't you think? Some American men do, I whispered. Kelly started coughing, actually I think she was choking on her food. Sarah squeezed my hand, and Sandy was grinning from ear to ear. You just haven't had the experiences I've had I'm sure. Well, yesterday I had a Frenchman stare at my nipples when I was riding the metro. I thought Kelly and Sandy were going to bust out laughing. Well, American men are just pigs, no culture, no artistic sense. I'm an art historian and I know of an American man who is gentle, empathetic and knows his art. I'd like to meet him. Perhaps you will, Audrey would you please pass the pepper. The exchanges went like that throughout the entire meal. I think my three companions found it amusing. A couple of others in our group who were close enough to overhear were all smiles. In spite of Audrey or perhaps in a crazy way because of her we had a most enjoyable and at times humorous meal. The salad, main course, wine, and especially the desert was fantastic. We finished off with a rich cup of coffee and a chocolate and cherry desert that any woman would kill for, including yours truly. But the evening had to come to an end. We decided that we were stuffed and though it would have done us good to walk off some of the meal, it was a wise idea to go in the van back to the hotel. Kelly, Sandy, Sarah and I stood in the hotel lobby not really knowing what to say. We had become such good friends and this was our last evening in Paris. There were hugs all the way around. Good night, see you at breakfast. It should be interesting, right Leslie?
Yes, interesting. Good night. Sarah and I got back to our room. Neither of us knew what to say. About five minutes after we had arrived at our room there was a knock on the door. It was Sandy. Leslie, I was in a little shop the other day and they had suitcases on sale. I thought you might not be thinking about how you were going to get your female wardrobe home so I picked this one up for you. Thanks Sandy, I hadn't thought that far. You have been such a good friend. The lavender bow you have tied to the handle should make it easy to find on the carousel. I haven't seen any that color before. I noticed the ribbon at a little corner florist shop and purchased it. I thought it was sort of like what you would get if you mixed baby blue and pink, sort of like what this crazy week has been for you. You know Sandy, I think you hit it right on the button. I'm going to keep the bow as a keepsake when we get back. Maybe your luggage will still appear. I doubt it Sarah, but thanks for your optimism. Good night you too. Remember breakfast at 9.30. I guess the hotel's shuttle bus leaves for the airport at 11.30. Good night, Sandy. Sarah and I undressed without saying a word. Both of us were feeling sad that this strange adventure was coming to an end. I took the suitcase with the lavender bow and packed it with all my clothes. My clothes! As I was packing my things I caressed the wonderful soft fabrics as I folded them and packed them away. Sarah just watched me. She seemed sad as she was packing her clothes. I picked up my baby doll PJS and headed to the bathroom. I took off my beautiful dress and my soft lingerie and showered. When I came out of the bathroom in my pajamas Sarah was waiting to go in. I packed the things I'd worn today and closed the suitcase. I went to the closet and found my male clothes. I wasn't looking forward to wearing the paint-splattered suit, for that matter any of my male clothes I was wearing when I came. Finally, Sarah came out of the bathroom. She was wearing her baby doll. As she came into the room I walked up to her and gave her a hug. I'm going to miss you so much. The embrace was mutual. I saw tears in Sarah's eyes. Leslie, I don't want this time together to end. Do you want Leslie the woman or Leslie the man? It doesn't matter I just want Leslie. We kissed, then broke our embrace turned out the lights and found our own beds. Good night Leslie. Good night, Sarah. I set my alarm and tossed and turned a bit before going to sleep. What would morning bring? Friday my alarm went off at 6.30. I thought I'd like to take a walk and enjoy Paris as it was waking up before we left. I hadn't asked Sarah if she was interested before we had gone to bed. When I got up Sarah rolled over. What time is it? 6.30. I thought I'd take an early walk. Would you like to go along? Sure. But give me a moment. While Sarah was in the bathroom I put on bra and panties, pantyhose, my skirt and blouse and gave myself a rudimentary makeup job. Luckily, I'd shaved before going to bed. When Sarah came out she put on about the same as I and off we went. The shopkeepers were just putting things out on the street. Restaurants were just opening for breakfast. Delivery trucks were out in full force. We enjoyed the cool morning air and the sights and sounds of Paris. I suppose we walked about two miles, we laughed, and joked and talked seriously about plans and what had happened between us. We got back to the hotel about 8.30, just in time to freshen up and get ready for breakfast. We showered and got dressed for breakfast. When are you going to dress for the flight back? Not before I have to. I thought after we finished breakfast I'd come up and change. At 9.15 there was a knock on the door. It was Sandy coming to see if we were ready for breakfast. We went down together. Each group took its usual table. Breakfast was more relaxed we didn't have any place we had to go before the bus picked us up. A little after 10 o'clock we finished and headed back to the room. Sandy headed to her room and said that she'd see us in about 5 minutes. When we got back I started my transformation back to my male self. Went into the bathroom and changed from my pantyhose, bra and panties into my boxers and t-shirt. I was putting my lingerie and blouse and skirt away when I heard a knock on the door. It was Sandy. She came into the room and she was pulling my suitcase. When did it come and how come you have it? It came Wednesday and I confess it's been in my room since then. But why? Please don't be angry. 
It came while you were finding the print at the little gallery. We came back and it was here. We knew the girls would be so disappointed if you started dressing as a male after they'd spent so much time picking out clothes for your female wardrobe. So Sandy and I decided we'd keep your clothes in her room and give you your luggage in time to get dressed for the flight today. Are you angry at us? No, I'm relieved that I have it. I think you were wise. I'd never have gotten so close to so many wonderful friends if I'd been dressed as a man. Actually, I really enjoyed my female clothes. And I do want to take them back with me. Actually, I thought I'd take them back with me, at least through the airport and customs back in the States. You might find it awkward. I'll give the suitcase back to you at the airport in New York if that's okay. That would be wonderful. I can't thank you two enough. Now I had better change. I gave them both a giant hug and got a kiss from each of them in return. Sandy left to finish packing and change. I found what I wanted to wear and went into the bathroom to change. When I came out I was a new man, what a change. At least you don't have any problem finding clean clothes to wear back. Say, I'm missing a black slip. I went to my other suitcase and found Sarah's black slip. Sorry about that. You know you aren't a bad-looking guy when you aren't wearing a paint-spattered suit. Thanks, I'll take that as a compliment. I wonder what people will say when I suddenly am a guy. I suppose we had better go down so we can check out before the bus comes. We went down in the elevator. The desk clerk seemed surprised to see me. I checked out and paid for my room. Mr. Phipps, I do hope you enjoyed your stay with us. I see you did get your suitcase. I take it you had a wonderful time in Paris. From the smile I wondered if he'd figured things out. From the expressions on Sandy and Sarah's faces I think they were wondering the same thing. Finally the bus came. Our suitcases were loaded and we boarded the bus for the airport. Kelly and Audrey were sitting in the seat ahead of us. I got some strange stares from members of the other group. I bent forward and whispered in Audrey's ear. Some men have more empathy for women than you might think. Audrey turned around, looked at me, gave me an expression that was absolutely priceless. I heard some chuckles come from other members of our group. Soon the uninitiated members of the other group got the whole story. I just smiled. We got to the airport and everything went without a hitch. I saw Sarah check my bag with the lavender bow. My treasures would be coming back with me. The flight was smooth but long. We finally arrived at New York at about four in the afternoon. Customs went smoothly, for me at least. We all waited in the airport terminal outside of the customs area to say our goodbyes. Steve was waiting for me. Sarah came and gave me my special suitcase. We hugged and I gave her a very special kiss. Soon all the women from our group had gathered around me and I gave each of them a hug and kiss. Steve looked at me and mouthed what's going on. I just smiled. I had the feeling Sarah and I would be seeing one another in the future. The others had left but Sarah and I needed to say a special goodbye. Steve, this is Sarah, a very special person I met on the tour. I can see that, good to meet you. It appears I might be seeing more of you. Thanks. I have the same feeling if you are a friend of Leslie's. I gave Sarah another hug and a goodbye kiss. Reluctantly we said goodbye. I'll give you a call. What's this second suitcase with the lavender ribbon? You only had one plus the carry-on when you left. That's a long story, someday maybe I'll tell you. Steve took me to my home. I had the weekend to sort of relax and try to figure out what had happened during my time in Paris. There were so many new feeling and experiences. I did unpack and put the things from that special suitcase in a special drawer in my dresser and in my closet. I did call Sarah and we arranged to get together the next weekend. I went back to work on Monday. Monday morning Margot greeted me and had all sorts of questions about my trip. I just smiled. She kept trying to get answers. I decided to just let her wonder. Sarah and I did start dating, actually more than dating. Sometimes it was just a quiet date at my place and sometimes a bit more interesting. A couple times Sarah suggested a girl's night out. I'll leave it to your imagination what that might be. 
On one of the girls' nights out Kelly and Sandy joined us for a Broadway show. Four months went by and then it was my birthday and a huge bouquet of pink roses was delivered to my office. Margot brought them in to me and handed me the card that had come with them. It read, Happy Birthday from the Six of Us. Next spring it's Rome and Florence. We hope you join us and you can forget about bringing a suitcase. Signed, the whole group, including Kelly. For some reason I think that Margot had read the card before she brought it in to me. I noticed her looking at the bookshelf behind my chair. The lavender bow was on the shelf along with a photo of two women holding hands under the arch de triumph. Is that photo from your trip? Yes. Who are they? They're two very good friends and lovers. Oh.